Right. I'm going to begin by um, taking my knife and just cleaning it of any grease off my of the side, especially the top, because quite often people tempted to put their finger on the on the on the top of the knife, and if you get any grease on anything, the gold sticks to that. So first of all, get any grease off your off your knife. The second thing you need to do, you need to put grease onto your tips. So take your tip and just put it on here like that on your forehead and it just puts a little bit of grease onto there and that lifts the gold. Now if you find that you don't have enough sticking power, what well, some because you don't have maybe very oily skin, then what you can do is get a little Vaseline, rub it on the um, top of your hand here and then just use that instead. You don't want much, okay? So that's really important not to um, overdo it. No. Yeah, please do that, Marianne. That would be really, um, really great of you. Thank you. <laughs> so, um, prepare your tips. I've got my bigger tip and now my little tip. Again, just hold it on the forehead like that. Um, I've got that set down on my desk got my knife, got my gold. My gilding fluid is in this little bottle. Just going to take the lid off, place that down here. Um, I've got my cotton wool, I've got my piece of uh, greaseproof paper. This is the sort of the thing that they use in burgers in the United States. So those of you who are from Texas and so forth, when you get those big, big, big bur burger things that you have, um, this is the sort of paper that they might be wrapped in or whatever, it, it, it's high quality. Okay, so I'm going to turn to the other camera, then you can see There we are. Okay, so first things first. In the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So I'm going to take, you can see the leaf of gold inside the book. Yeah. So now you can see the, the gold on the pad. It's a little wrinkled, so I'm going to blow on it. Now, if you do do that wrong, you'll blow it right off the thing. So you right over the top and just a little puff. Um, you can even use a straw for that. Now, do you see how with the movement of my arm, how that little corner came up? That's perfectly normal. Now, I'm looking at my board and I want to start here. I'm gonna move around, a little bit of dust on there. So I'm going to start here and the width is there. So I measure that to there. Now make the gold a little bit larger than it needs to be. The best thing is to be generous in the amount of you gold that you use. And I just put that we need to move this slightly across there. So I'm slipping this under the gold leaf. Just lifting it. Let it fold off. Okay, now this is um, 24 karat gold leaf. So it's pure gold. So it's heavier. So it, it you can see the weight that's going on there. Now I'm going to use my um, tip for this one. I'm going to use a combination of different tools. So, and I want to just sort of tap it and pick it up so that it's as smooth as possible on that side. So I'll check that up. 
Now, the key is you don't want too much fluid. So I'm going to go over all this area like this. And it's evaporating almost immediately. So I'm going back over it. To make sure that the, the bowl is really dampened, make sure the edges haven't dried too quickly. Put a bit more on there. Need it so that there's, and you want it, when you're using the tip, you want it to be definitely wet. Just with a little flick, you put it down. So you see there, as it's drying, it's sucking the gold onto the bowl. Um, you could burnish the bowl before you put the gold on, um, but you don't have to. Um, you can do it either then or, or after. So can you see that gold is on there? Now I'm going to just take, now that that's dried for a few minutes, I'm just taking a little bit of cotton wool and lightly dabbing it down like that. Okay. So now I'm going to put on the next piece. Now the next piece um, is going to be slightly at an angle, I think. So if I take so you see I've got that piece there that I've cut. Going to lift it with my tip. Let's check it's going to be the right sort of size. Yep. Yeah. So now I'm going to put my layer of fluid on. Try not to get the fluid onto the gold you've already put on there. But at the same time, don't leave a gap. And then. Now you can see here that the gold is overlapping. That's all good. And just tap it down with the tip. And put the next piece on. So see I'm putting the, the knife straight down and a sort of sawing action, even pressure. Try and keep the tip parallel to the board, to, to the cushion, um, so it's lifting it up. So now I'm going to put the layer of fluid on. I put quite a lot on that time. And so I'll just put that on here like that, making sure it's overlapping um, and just over the edge. Don't put it over too, too far. Okay. Just tap that down, put that down. Take my cotton wool. Let's get this so this is a There we are. 
So on here, just tapping that down. Now that that's had a time to dry, lightly on that second one, but I'm not touching this one. And in fact, what I'm going to do, just take that out for a moment. Can you see how that's wet underneath there? It's giving you that rippled effect. Next to it, you can see how the, 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 the fluid has dried and it's sucking the gold onto the bowl. And this one here, the first one I can put on, you can see it's, it's really pulled flat. So I am thinking if I prop this up like that, that might be a better way of you seeing it. Is that better? So now I've got um, a little bit of gold over here. So um, I'm going to whoops that's the problem with uh, this so I'm going to take this little bit of gold and I'm going to cut it this time I'm going to just lift it with my smaller the take the water building fluid sorry put that across here like that make sure it's gone right up to the corners there and then you see how it just pulls off pull that across there and dampen that now you can still see here this is still very um, wrinkled with the fluid underneath. So I mustn't touch that yet. But I'm just still going back over the first lot that I did. And can you see how shiny that is? You can see that reflection already. Now, be very careful to make sure you leave this long enough. If you start um, polishing this up, which is the next step, too soon, it, it won't have a chance to stick or it will dull the gold because you'll be rippling the um, bowl underneath. So just be very patient with that. Now, on here, you see I've just got that little bit of gold. I'm going to leave that for now because I'll probably use that for patching. Um, instead of which I'm going to put out another piece of gold. Was the last in that book, so I'll go to this one. Open the gold up. And look back on this. So now you can see. Now from this angle, can you see that little bit there? See how that's rough? That's where I hadn't uh, sanded it. This is gonna be a painted border here, so I'm not worried about that. Um, but you can see the difference between this area and, and this area, okay? So now, turning back around to here, I'm going to make a piece into here. And ideally, I want to make a sort of triangle. So if I bring this carefully across, I'm going to make it that sort of angle. So 
Now, for this bit, I'm going to take the greaseproof paper and show you this one. So, shiny side down, place it on the top, and with my finger, just carefully press it onto the paper. Then I can lift the paper and I've got maximum control. to put this on here. So you see that I can position that exactly as I want it. And that's going to give me the best if I put it like that. Now, when you use the paper, you don't want the surface to be wet. So give it a good cover of, of, of the fluid. Make sure you've covered everywhere, especially the, where, the, where it meets. And then you can see that, I'm trying to get it where you can see where it's drying. Yeah, you can just see, you see around here, it's beginning to dry and that edge. Let's get it, I'm gonna go back over it now. Just make sure that the, the bowl has really damp, got damp. And then I'm gonna wait a um, couple of minutes while that evaporates so that it's no longer, Put it this way, can you see if that's better? There, you see how that's beginning to dry now. So you can see those um, little damp areas. That's the way we want it, not where it's shiny. So I'm waiting for that to dry off. Now, some people do this by breathing over it, um, a sort of Russian technique. Um, but um, now that's just about right. I'm going to position and get a bit of cotton wool. And position this now be very careful when you're rubbing the paper you can push it to the point that it actually moves out of the way so which especially those edges. Now, you can see here that this has um, gone nice and adhered very quickly. I've got a little gap here. So I'm gonna go back to my uh, little piece that I left earlier, and I'm gonna cut two little pieces. Go on to there. Lift, lift this, where's my brush? Now I'm using my tip, so I'm just going to put some real fluid there. And make sure it's fully covered. It goes on perfectly like that. So, and I just need one little piece to on the end. So you can see here, I've got just a little piece. And then I've waited a little bit, just tap it down, tap these down now. And here, with this um, cotton wool, I'm just going to lightly press it. If you've got a pet cat, 
You think how the cat loves to be stroked? That's exactly what we're doing here. Let me bring that up. Make sure that um, your cotton wool is dry. Now you can see how that's polishing up now. Now this one here that I put on second, I'm not going to touch yet. I don't think it's uh, dry enough. And if you do it too quickly, as I say, it will be dull. So this is burnished. This polishing, the name for it is, is burnishing. And You can see a little patch here, as you can see that if I get it in the raking light, it's a little duller. This little patch here is quite dull. And I think that's because it's a bit more damp than, than what's over here. Now, I'm going to take my burnisher now. Um, I'm going to warm the, the tip by rubbing it on my, um, just to rub it on my jumper. And I just want to listen to it. That's quite sort of nice. Now you do this too early. and it will drag and pull. Now this could dry a little bit more yet, but you see, Oh, uh, that's, there we are. You see the difference? Now, as you can still see that there's a sort of um, slight dull bits in there. So we're gonna burn, continue to burnish it a little bit when it's a little bit drier, but because it's still a bit too damp, um, it's leaving me with that slightly dulled areas. You can see that's really got a lovely sheen to it. There. You can see see the mirror effect there. Okay. So let's move this uh, put the camera back. You can see where we got to. So here, now you remember this one I put on with the, um, with the greaseproof paper and because uh, the surface was drier, therefore I can polish it up sooner than the ones that had the fluid on. It's really getting it just at the right time. Now, this will show you some of the drawbacks of using the paper. Can you see the, the inscribed line here? You can just see that red bowl showing through. The water sucks gold onto the surface. Because this is quite a dry method, it's not sucking it into the indentations there. And you can just see there's some little patches like here 
where it's not stuck so well. So the advantage of using the grease proof paper is that you can really control the gold and put it exactly where you want. The drawback is that you don't always get such a good adhesion, especially if you've made um, an incisive marks into the into the gold. So that's just one of those things to remember. So, and I'm keeping these little bits of gold because I can use them to patch where the gold hasn't quite taken. So I just take my damp brush and you see here this little, little one. So it's going to put a little bit of water and then put the little bit of gold over the top, press it down quite firmly, let it dry. If you see, if it's wet and you put the grease proof paper, what happens is that the water comes through the gold and it will discolor it. Um, so you, you need to um, have a very dry surface to make sure that the gold doesn't get discolored. So. So this piece here will uh, probably put a, a second piece of gold. Yeah, grease proof paper, wax paper, it's the same name. It's the same, same thing, same product. So I'm going back over here now, push these up. Now this bit here is still a bit, now this is good because I can show you the effect when it's damp. Can you see just, just here? That's because it's too damp. So it's, and there, you see the two damp patches here and here. So with those two, I still need to wait um, for it to dry. You can see a little bit here, which has come off, which I'm gonna to have to cover. But you see down here, that has, has dried nicely and burnished up really well without all those little holes. A little bit of a hole, you can see one just up there. But up here, it, it's worse. And here you can see those little bubbles. See those lots of those little dots? That's caused by um, the air bubbles in the gesso. Um, so from here, um, you know, when it's finished, you wouldn't really notice that unless you were really looking closely. But when you really want your work to be perfect, that's the sort of thing that you'd be working on. Yeah, you can use, um, you can do it to cut it with scissors. Um, I don't particularly go for that process. I, I'd, I'd rather use, um, the knife and cut the pieces and lift them. Um, Paul, yeah, in terms of burnishing, um, I wouldn't leave it a day. You've got to get it really at the optimum moment. Now, depending on how damp the bowl is, depends on when it reaches that right time. So now, that bit that I'd... Um, burnished earlier. See here, you can see it's now, 
you want it to feel a little bit waxy. But not so that it's pulling. Now this is, let me get that camera so you can see. So you see that bit there? You see it's getting those little ridges that we saw disappearing. Now, if you look where I've been burnishing there, I don't know if you can really see it, but there's, it's a little streaky just there. So I just use the cotton wool just to polish that down. No, doing doing um, double gilding, you start exactly the same way, and then just put a second guild on when you when you finished. Now, what you can do if you want to push the time out is just guild in small sections. Um, the bowl will reactivate. Um, I, when we were doing the cross at Litchfield, we actually were able to patch and burnish the patches um, a month after we'd put it on first of all. But um, once the gold is on, then you need to be burnishing at the right time. You can't leave that. And in fact, if you do, what happens is it dries too much and the it will scratch off so you can see there got this really lovely brilliant shine in the gold and a nice even smooth surface Now, this bit here is where I'm going to have a red border, so um, I'm not worried about that. I'm not pressing very hard. It's just a little pressure as well as the weight of the burnisher. you press too hard then you tend to leave ridges and you have to generally press harder if, if it's um, been left for longer. It's obviously as the clay dries so it becomes more resistant. So I like to gild and burnish as I go along and that way I don't have to rush it, I can leave I can go off and have my lunch, I can come back again. So now I'm coming to this little patch here, which was a little damp. So I'm going to polish that with this, um, leave that still a little bit more. And then these little patches here, now that hasn't taken terribly well. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to burnish this area 
and then I'll second put another bit of gold onto there. Now, this area, because it had less fluid on it, I'm having to put a bit of extra pressure to get it to, to burnish up. Notice the angle that I'm holding the, the burnisher in. It's not sort of vertical, slightly at an angle. And it's not straight lines, it's actually slightly going in a circular motion, but I'm going back over that bit that I was doing before. Yeah, if I double gild, I usually burnish in between layers. the difference that's a little more of a thud and that's a slightly higher pitch and that's because this area is drier than this area this is the one that had that fluid on and it actually makes a difference to how the the gold feels beneath the burnisher the the drier it is the less as it were waxy feel there is Hear that? In here, there's a sort of um, yeah, less than a minute to go. So um, we'll have a sort of ten-minute break, and then we'll be back at eleven o'clock. Okay, and I'll continue to show you what to do. All right, everyone. See you in um, in ten minutes.